between Polaris and elevation angle. Uh, well, I think the distance is supposed to be the same as the radius, but they claim the radius is, isn't it? Well, yeah, so the distance right. to the star would be the radius, right? It's a 39.59 under it. And then they have that 69 miles per degree linear relationship they love to claim exclusivity over. Right, but we always say that it works for us too, and they say that we can't have it. <laughs> so what we did here is kinematically derive an equivalent expression, which would express the same thing through uh, trig trigonometric functions and approximate a circle of the same radius. Right, so we, instead of using a linear 69 miles per degree, We'll use a complicated formula with a little bit of radians, get a hypotenuse 39.59, and then use a unit circle to denote the length of the various triangles at each step. And we'll do this repetitive process as we go to essentially approximate this little sphere down, which would function as a perfectly movable, manipulable radius that follows you of 39.59 exactly, which would be the exact thing we needed for the multivision model to work, right? You know that little sphere that we can manipulate? Well, if we can replace that math with this math, which we absolutely can because it's equivalent, then bendy light isn't a thing because we have spherical <laughs> relationships and not linear. And then uh, we can derive other things from there. Like essentially, just having this built already reclaims uh, 69 miles per degree as our relationship because we derived it without it and proved it mathematically. So what it says is <laughs> if you do one uh, 69 miles per degree on this flat axis, a star will rotate and spin one degree overhead all the time, forever, in a little circle that follows you around in a radius of 39.59. So there's really, there's really nothing that can be done to stop what we're going to do next, right? Like, so once we reclaim the sky, go over the long let, explain geodesic surveying and its sinister undercoding of uh, astrogeodetics, then we can claim the sky, claim the relationship, and claim pretty much everything. Like it's gonna be over, guys. I don't, I don't see any way that we can be stopped now. What do you guys think? Fantastic. And so the importance of the kinematic relationship drawn here—that you know you can't have it because it's linear, right? Can you kind of touch on that a little bit? Yeah, the, yeah. So they claimed the exclusivity of that argument because yeah. we've we've been arguing for a long time with no success. You know, the that the maps here are derived from Polaris correction angles, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like their go-to argument to dismiss that is this linear relationship here. So kind of just like break that. Yeah, down. right. So because they have a claimed exclusivity, even though we own that relationship, because we've mathematically derived it in equivalent, we can now reclaim that relationship and that original one. So. We can claim, like, so when they say maps, right, maps don't align. Well, we know actually now that all maps are not only aligned to the sky, but like solidified point to point force maps, clones of the sky. So latitude, latitude is, you know, latitude, elevation angles from the stars. Longitude is literally celestial sphere, longitude through the center of the earth. Like there's no way around it. It goes right through the prime meridian of uh, the observatory from the Royal Society. And every map that's uh, ever been made, by the way, is absolutely fake like we have no real maps right so we can prove that i think we can solidify that and then we can kind of move to reclaim the field from there what do you guys think about maps yeah do you want to touch on the 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 significance of how we're gonna show that the maps are, are fake well actually it wasn't it's not us that's going to show it it was kind of already shown by flat fact and video about three years ago she put out where she shows that all the maps are basically just artist renditions because you know if the maps had usefulness <laughs> if they were to actually be used by sailors right we're told that people knew it was a globe and they've been navigating on a globe for you know in perpetuity for thousands of years depending on which timeline you believe in and which Greek oh, right. you're, you're aware of right but we got this history of maps going back to like i think what's the earliest one we can get like late 1400s so, yeah 14 so, 1500s yeah so they all have the same tropics they're all in alignment with the tropic of cancer and capricorn now, if you were going to make a star map to navigate with right well you do that based on you know the position of the sky at a particular time of year so you snapshot that and then where the cycle will continue from the year from there well that would all be relative to where the star alignment or uh, where the constellations would be um, relative to the, the sun's position, right? So when they were deriving their maps, the tropics would be different. 
celestial alignment that they would be, you know, deriving their maps for look or deriving their maps for to traverse the plane would be they wouldn't write Tropica Capri Capricorn and Cancer on everything. These all the maps presented to us are retroactively uh they're they're just artist renditions, man. We don't have an actual yeah. map. It's all it's all just presented to us with a latitude and longitude system on it and <clears throat> and a corresponding tropics to modern time. Dude, so they got us good, right? They fucked us pretty good. They did an injection of some stuff that's going to be, I think, completely fake. I read through it. You guys, I'll, I'll show it to you later. You'll probably come to the same conclusion. But what that leaves us with is, well, am I going to prove when they took the globe? Like, which map did they transfer from? No, all of them. All of them are fake. That all aligned. If you know how to use the stars, right, you don't need their maps since all maps are stars. You guys following? <laughs> <clears throat> I don't, you know, I don't know. Could one of you guys steel man the argument? I'd like to see it presented in a debate style. It could be all scripted, you know, the way yeah. Witsit was describing earlier. Well, we don't have anything scripted, bro. <laughs> I know. I mean, I just don't see how it plays out if you're debating somebody over this. Yeah. Why, would, why would we debate this, though? I don't Which care is... about the debate part. I want to know more. Okay. So what do you mean all maps are fake because... Well, you're wrong it's so funny. you said i don't want to see a debate and then you start asking him questions anyway that's what i was hoping for oh, i need to ask well, I'm just i know but that's why i wanted the debate but i'm done talking so, so you can see you said you could use the star map you said all yeah. maps are star maps dude so like what the correlation was was they gave us uh this injection of uh, when they invented longitude right and it's very specific, and it's very detailed, and there's a whole story in it and a lore that goes along with it. And the end result is that, you know, they, the Longitude Act of 1712, I think, is when they declared that they needed to go find the Longitude. And they had a guy invent the perfect clock to spite Newton, and they off they went to plump the depths of the southern latitudes. And oh, lo and behold, they did it. They were so successful. The best clock ever. Everyone has latitude. All right, longitude. And then off they go. Except you start looking through maps, and you're like, oh, the Mercator map, like the de facto equidistant. Echo Rectangular perfect fucking map came out in 1500 something, but it has longitude on it. Hold on, wait a second. So we have full on divisions of equi, equi longitude on this map, but we just invented longitude, I thought. Oh shit, okay. And you look at all the other maps and the 1400 and 1500, and they all have these longitudinal lines. And you'll find that all the maps, besides being artist renditions, are actual literal star maps. So there's like a star map format. It's the two fucking sides of the, you know, the northern and southern hemisphere. It's in a circle. And it, they what they did was they goofed us and put fucking land maps in there that were all crooked and fucking converging towards the bottom of a ball and had a good laugh. But people still have star maps out there. And when you see those comparatively, you'll understand, oh, these are all supposed to be star maps. In which case, where are the real fucking maps? Where are the navigation worthy, ready, ephemeris corrected navigation maps? Nowhere. There's none of them. And so what they do with those corrections is when they mark the longitude to the celestial sphere, they deflected the vertical of the intersection, and that correction angle went into the ephemeris table for you to deflect later when you're navigating to get back. Crazy. And one degree of deviation, oh. for, right? So yeah, you, you can figure it out with what? It's in like ha half a degree, which is something like 12 meters or something really ridiculously close. They could do just some uh, intersection with the moon or one of the other celestial objects that they know how to track. They use pretty much a time inter intercedence, but they, in they injected all of that so we would need longitude. Right? But don't, nobody needs longitude. Nobody needs the grid system. <laughs> so you can determine how to sail without that, right? What was this equidistant longitude that was found in 1587 or whatever? The Mercator. The Mercator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, is, what are you talking about? What's going on there? So that's like a famously known map, right? Right. Because it's equidistant. People in sailors used to like chop it up and like cut it in half and proportion it out and figure out lines of longitude that way. So it was so accurate and it was so equidistant. You could fold it and like you make smaller chunks, make smaller equidistant plots. Okay. And you wouldn't be able to do that unless the longitude was exactly right. right? So that's why it's famous for that. Like they used to do that for it with it. And then I'm like, oh, but that came out 200 years ready to go before they invented the longitude. What the fuck? Right. And then you start looking at the other maps and none of it, like it all kind of fell apart for me. <laughs> there is no actual map and there's a whole bunch of star maps. And then you're like, if you look into cartography, the first map was a star map cave, had a drawing of the stars on it. And literally every map we've ever made since has been a star map in one way or another. And at the end of this, uh, their search, they literally did 
heavy, hardcore geodesic surveying where they got astro geodetics, combined them two things as close as they could, finished it off. You know what I mean? It's pretty solidified. Wow. But with the math we have developed now to literally like re reclaim that relationship, then there's literally nothing that can go wrong, I think. So it's pretty much over. That's pretty wild. Yeah, man. 69.09 miles per degree <laughs> and rotate and spin. Motherfucker, <laughs> you know, that little that little dome follows you around on Bislin's model. Yeah, well, well, now I own that, so I can do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> What's the goal with making a map? What's the goal now? We're not going to make it. <laughs> it took them to, like 200 years to make a map, dude. Speaking of which, what, what happened to the website? I saw you post something about, was it Walter Bislin's website? I did. Uh, you posted something and you'd went to a website and I thought it was about Walter Bislin, but it was of error 404. It wasn't there anymore. What, what was that about? Was that today? Or did you see a video where I did that? Uh, yesterday. Hmm. Was it? A, hmm. Didn't watch the video, but I saw where you posted the video and that was the screen. Uh, yeah, yeah. The screenshot. yeah, that was for, for JT, it was a while ago, and when I made that video, it was taken offline, so I had to go to archive. <laughs> I remember that, and I was like, "Did you see that?" Because no, no, yeah, that's all old. It's, it's fine. It's up still, oh. but um, they did update it to literally call us out directly, like to make fun of Witsit and say, "Oh, actually, other flat earthers will use depictions of this erroneously. Make sure to you know yell this at them." <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> right? But that's based on the math the linear relationship that they say we can't have. Other than that. That whole model is based on observations of the celestial, which, guess what, are part of the metonic cycle, not exclusive to the globe, have nothing to do with Newtonian, are all just observational, so definitely not exclusive. The only thing, the only thing that we could not have was that linear relationship, which was how it moved around. So, you can replace that, take everything else, and now it's ours. Bendy light. Cannot say bendy light, motherfucker. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I'll have to what you you lay all that out so, in that video, don't you? So the thirty nine fifty nine. Okay, explain how the thirty nine fifty nine was key. So the the thirty nine fifty nine is the celestial sphere. It's the radius of your perspective of how far you can see. It it all equates to the angles of Polaris, like how far you get from it. So that's how that's how they made the whole thing. So the spherical excess that they call right, that's just deviations from that on the ground relative to the map that they made in the sky based on that thirty nine fifty nine. There was a guy named Gauss who came up with the uh, with the G. With, well, what did he do? Was he the geoid? No, no. Was yeah. he, the, did he do the geoid model or the celestial sphere model? I forget. Didn't he do the did refraction he, model? Gauss, you talking about? Like no, a spheroid. He gave him a geoid model with a spherical excess of thirty nine fifty nine. Right. And basically anything that deviates from that, you know, is as they call spherical excess, right? But they need a specific amount to get to 3959. Gauss has a theorem that where you, you can turn any amount of spherical excess into the radius of the uh <laughs> of the sphere that or the sphere that was measured. Right, right. 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 So you they can always get back to how they need to measure the celestial sphere or how they need to conform the ground rather to the celestial sphere to maintain the, you know, a perfect sphere in the sky. So, yeah. yeah, so what they did is they went around observation points, right? They took measurements and they said, okay, well, the, based on these transits, um, we must be off alignment due to the earth being, you know, a slightly Grab a potential and, gravity over there or something. It's always right. a gravity well, whatever we got to right. adjust. Right, yeah. all, these, all these different things, right? So basically they just went around did all these measurements came up with ways uh, to deflect their vertical angle to make sure that it, you know, gets back to the celestial sphere. And they do that through the angular excess and that reifies the whole thing. So every distance that they derive, right, inherently has curvature built into it. So when they're like, Oh, uh, what? <laughs> We're like I, I've seen this a lot on Twitter lately, where it'll be like the flat Earth distance prediction is X Y Z between you know this distance and that distance, and then the globe prediction is this distance, and the globe prediction always wins. I don't know who the fuck is given flat Earth predictions or whatever, but they're not even we don't even have those. The, nobody does. They're they're all all the distances are based off of uh, the sky. <laughs> right, yeah. So the curvature only exists in that hypothetical relationship to maintain uh, a perfect sphere. Their idea. 
but it does exist in that math, right? So you can't like it's a, it's definitely there. They forced it into you. It's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. It's going to be a whole uncovering thing, but yeah, that's the quick TLDR. Now we got to bring the dog out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what are we doing movie night, bro? Uh, 